Good morning and a very warm welcome to our morning prayer for the 20th of July. It's a real pleasure to have your company. If you don't know me, I'm Sheena Burrell, the Alma Coordinator. And I'm really thankful for your prayers for me as I've been going through surgery and chemotherapy. There's a long haul ahead, but I'm very grateful and I'm really thankful for this pause when I can lead morning prayer again. It's a very exciting time for Alma with the Lambeth Conference coming up with Alma Sunday, this coming Sunday, the 24th of July. And I'd really like to invite all of you who are listening and joining us today for morning prayer to join us in the cathedral at 5.30 on Sunday, the 24th, for our evening Eucharist. And if you're free beforehand, we have an afternoon tea at St Vidast from 3.30. And if you'd like to come to that, would you please let my colleague Helen Dury know? Shall we pray? O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, creator of all. To you be praise and glory forever. As your dawn renews the face of the earth, bringing light and life to all creation, May we rejoice in this day you have made, as we wake refreshed from the depths of sleep. Open our eyes to behold your presence, and strengthen our hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 99. The Lord is King, let the peoples tremble. He is enthroned above the cherubim, let the earth shake. The Lord is great in Zion and high above all peoples. Let them praise your name, which is great and awesome. The Lord our God is holy. Mighty King who loves justice, you have established equity. You have executed justice and righteousness in Jacob. Exalt the Lord our God, bow down before his footstool, for he is holy. Moses and Aaron among his priests, and Samuel among those who call upon his name. They called upon the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them out of the pillar of cloud. They kept his testimonies and the law that he gave them. You answered them, O Lord our God. You were a God who forgave them and pardoned them for their offences. Exalt the Lord our God and worship him upon his holy hill, for the Lord our God is holy. Lord God, mighty King, you love justice and establish equity. May we love justice more than gain and mercy more than power through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading is from 1 Samuel 1, 1 to 20. There was a certain man of Ramathaim, a Zophite from the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zup, Zuf, an Ephraimite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Now this man used to go up year by year from his town to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts at Shiloh, 
where the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, were priests of the Lord. On the day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to his wife Penina and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though the Lord had closed her womb. Her rival used to provoke her severely to irritate her, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it went on year after year. As often as she went up to the house of the Lord, she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. Her husband Elkanah said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten a drunk at Shiloh, Hannah rose and presented herself before the Lord. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the doorpost of the temple of the Lord. She was deeply distressed and prayed to the Lord and wept bitterly. She made this vow, O Lord of hosts, if only you will look on the misery of your servant and remember me, and not forget your servant, but will give your servant a male child, then will I set him before you as a Nazarite until the day of his death. He shall neither drink wine nor intoxicants, no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before the Lord, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was praying silently, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you make a drunken spectacle of yourself? Put away your wine. But Hannah answered him, No, my Lord, I am a woman deeply troubled. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink but I have been pouring out my soul before the Lord. Do not regard your servant as a worthless woman, for I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation all this time. Then Eli answered, Go in peace. The God of Israel grant the petition you have made to him. And she said, Let your servant find favour in your sight. Then the woman went to her quarters and ate and drank with her husband, and her countenance was sad no longer. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord. Then they went back to their house at Ramah. Elkanah knew his wife Hannah, and the Lord remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She named him Samuel, for she said, I have asked him of the Lord. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. With joy you will draw water from the wells of salvation. On that day you will say, Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the nations. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises, sing God's praises, who has triumphed gloriously. Let this be known in all the world. Shout and sing for joy that you dwell in Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. All the earth shout and sing for joy, for great in your midst is the Holy One. Our New Testament reading this morning is from Luke 19, verses 28 to 40. After he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he came near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find there a coat that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks you, why are you untying it? Just say this, the Lord needs it. 
So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. As they were untying the coat, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the coat? They said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the coat, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. He answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones would shout out. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and be not wise in your own sight. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Trust in the Lord with all your heart Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and be not wise in your own sight. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You have set us free to worship you without fear, holy and righteous in your sight. We come now to pray for the day and its tasks, the world and its needs, and the church and her life. We are so full of thanks, Lord, for all that we have seen in our partner diocese in these past weeks. The pace of change and excitement. We are so grateful that we now have our 12 partner bishops. We thank you for the enthronement and consecration of Bishop Lucas and Shima in Nyasa last Sunday, last Saturday, and for the enthronement in Angola of Pedro Villar Jamba for the Diocese of the Centre and the South on Sunday last week and the week before of the enthronement of, of from Augusto Domingos in the Diocese of Cristo Rey. And this coming Sunday, we join our prayers with the Angolan Church as Joaquim Bondo is enthroned as the Bishop of Divine Hope Diocese. We are so thankful for these signs and symbols of growth. We pray for each of the eight new dioceses 
three in Angola, five in Mozambique. And we pray for the bishops, especially of the new diocese, as they seek to shepherd their people, as they seek to serve the church and to enable the church to grow. We thank you that bishops are no longer traveling such huge, huge distances in Angola and Mozambique. And we pray for these new dioceses, their staff, their people, all who long to see them prosper and to see the gospel spread in their midst. We pray this month particularly for the Diocese of Zambezia, for Bishop Vicente Sosa, for the diocesan team. And today we pray for the Rio Shiri district of Zambezia. We pray for the new Archdeacon, Venerable George Estaba, and the parish of St Mark's Macuba. In London, we pray for HTB and its staff team. And we thank you for the ministry that comes from that church. And in the worldwide Anglican Communion, we pray for the Diocese of Maseno East in Kenya, and we pray for Bishop Joshua Uwiti. And in these weeks, or days now, before the Lambeth Conference, we pray for the Lambeth Conference team, for the Primates group, for Archbishop Justin and Archbishop Stephen, as they prepare for the conference. And we pray for all our partner bishops, 11 of whom will be coming to their first Lambeth Conference, and for Bishop Andre coming to his final Lambeth Conference. We thank you so much for the growth that we have seen in Alma. We think back to the 2008 Lambeth Conference and our River of Prayers service when we had four partner bishops three partner bishops. Since then we've had the Diocese of Nampula and then we've had the eight new dioceses this year. To you Lord be the glory. We pray too for Alma Sunday on the 24th of July. Everyone is warmly invited to join us in the cathedral where we give thanks for our partnership in the gospel, for everything we have learnt with and from our partners. We thank you for their intentional discipleship, for their focus on youth, the ministry to the third age that we see thriving. Those who reach out to rural schools, especially the ones in Pungwe Diocese, who have such inspiring ministries, we thank you that we are richer because we are in partnership and because you have taught us to rejoice with those who rejoice, to mourn with those who mourn. Be with us on Alma Sunday this year, Lord, and be with all our partners and all the London Bishops staff team as they meet at the Lambeth Conference. But as we pray, we're so aware that we're living through a time of extreme temperatures in Europe and the UK. And because of this, we're sharing and experiencing the environmental and the health consequences that are familiar to so many across our world. We lament the loss of life and homes. We lament the fires that are ravaging precious woodlands. And we lament too of the droughts and cyclones that our partners are facing ever more frequently. Father of creation, we pray to you that we will take action to halt the warming of our world. Give us and our leaders the will to cut emissions to embrace green technologies wherever we can, to challenge and change our lifestyles. 
and to hold to account those in power, to implement the promises that have already been made, but not yet funded at COP26 and at previous summits. Lord, for those who are sick in mind, body or spirit, will you give them your comfort? Will you give them your peace? Will you give them your freedom from fear and the knowledge of your love? For those who mourn, may they know your everlasting arms around them, that day by day, as they take tentative steps, they know your love and encounter it in the hands and feet of those who know them and pray for them. We close our prayers today with a prayer by Bishop Julie, the Bishop of Chelmsford, as part of the Lambeth Conference prayer journey. Lord of all, we thank you for the family of the Anglican Communion. We pray that in our wonderful diversity, we may each know ourselves created in your image and loved by you. Inspire us to work together to hasten the day when people will come from north and south, east and west, to find their honoured and equal place at your table and to find their home in your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And I'll collect for today. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of the church is governed and sanctified. Hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you so much for joining us today. I meant to show you as we prayed for Zambasia. This is the Diocese of Zambasia here, next to the coast and next to the Malawian border. May Zambasia know our prayers and our partners. And please, if you can, do come to the cathedral on Sunday to join us for our Alma Sunday Eucharist. And many thanks for joining us today. Go well.